Hey guys, Grubsy here with my first computer science video. Okay, I know it's been a while, but let's just come right into it, okay? So, what is binary? So, what's the next slide? What is it? Okay. Binary is a counting system which we use, mainly in computers and that, okay, to represent base two numbers. Okay, because it's a low storage value, we can use bits to represent it. Okay, so the way it works is it goes up in powers two, which is, I guess you can think of it almost the same as our own system. Okay, so I'm literally going to teach you how to count to 10. Okay, you should know this. So I'm just going to this example here because this is like the third time I have to re-record it. Um, so deanery. Okay, deanery is what you've been counting in your whole life. Okay, so back in primary school or kindergarten or whatever you want to call it, you've always counted in powers of 10. Okay, so let's start with 10 to the power of 0. Okay, that's 1. You've got 10 to the power of 1, which is 10. 10 to the power of 2, which is 100. And 10 to the power of 3, which is your thousands. Okay, so literally all this is is a... Do you remember back in primary school when you first started doing addition or timesing and you had to like put the little column headings so which, what each number stood for? That's all this is. Okay, so ignore the powers at the moment if you want to, if that helps. And just read the units we've got. So units would be our ones, 10 to the power of one would be our tens, 10 to the power of two would be our hundreds, and 10 to the power of three would be our thousands. Okay, so in deanery, we have got 10 characters we can use. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's all we can use in deanery because it's base 10. So that's 10 digits we can use, or 10 characters, whatever you want to call them. Okay. So if we take the number 562 and we want to then put this into a deanery county system, this is already in deanery, but I'm just going to show you how this works. Okay, so if we want the number 562, the reason it's going to make sense and be really simple is because it is simple and it does make sense because that's what you've been using your entire life. When we get to the counted in binary, it starts all fit together. But I thought it'd be best to show you an example you understand and find easy rather than throwing you into something that would look complex and then you just be like, eh, and then from you have to explain how it would work in our system. So it's best to show you how it works before I show you binary. Okay. So we've got the number 562. We've got. So the way this is going to work is we always start from the most significant bit. And in this case, when we've got our column headings read out, and because the number's less than 1,000, I've started with the thousands col column as my most significant bit. So, 562 divided by 1000, so 10 to the power of 3, is 0 0.562. But obviously, um, since we're doing a number system, we're not going to start with decimals or anything like that. No, no, no. So what we do is we round down. So we have the number 0 in that column. Same with the hundreds, okay? So 562, can you divide by 100? Yes, you can. Uh, so 10 to the power of 2, um, when it's dividing 562, uh, it goes into it 5 times, so it would be 5.62 times it would go into it. But we always round down, so we just have 5. Okay, so we've got the 5 there, so 562 divided by uh, 100 would be 5.62. But we just want one digit, a whole number we want. So we've just got the number 5. And we've rounded down because we don't want more. We always, have, we always want to make sure we don't overgo or overshoot what our target is. Okay, so now we've got rid of the 500. There's 500 in that column there. That 5 represents 500. So now we're left with just 62. So 62 divided by 10, 6.2. But we're just going to stick with 6, because we round down again. And then 2 divided by 1, which is obviously just 2. Then you see we have the number 0, 5, 6, 2. Or in layman's terms, what you'd understand, it just comes up with the number 562, because we only want to pay attention to the digits that mean something. Zeros don't mean anything unless they're in between. If they're before, it means nothing. If they're after, it means something. And if they're in between, it means something. So only when before, you don't have to pay attention to them. So let's start with something. Let's go on to a different example, something a lot higher. And we'll go with 2,478 because that's a number that we can do easily. All numbers are easy once you, once you start to learn the system. It's just a matter of understanding the fundamentals and then applying that mechanic. So what we want to do is we want to divide 2,478 
by 1000 or 10 to the power of 3. So it goes into it 2.478 times. We just let round down for the number 2. We're then left with 478. 478 divided by 100, 4.78 would give us, as I said, always round down to the number 4. So there's 400s. There's 7 tens. And then 8 divided by 1, just 8. Okay. So, really, really simple. Okay. Now we have to apply this into a real world mechanic. So, made this really, really simple. 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, to the power of 2, to the power of 3, to the power of 4, to the power of 5, to the power of 6, to the power of 7. The reason we're using 2 powers is because binary is a base 2 counter system. Deanery is base 10. Binary is base 2. So that means we only have two characters to relate to, use, which are 0 and 1. Obviously, 0 means nothing unless it's in between. And 1 obviously means that we times. So, like in here, we did 8 times 1 uh, plus 10 times 7 plus 10 times 2 plus 10 times 3. And that give, ends up giving us that answer 2478. So it's the same in here. Okay, so let's say we wanted to do the number, I don't know, let's say we've number 56. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a calculator to help you guys understand a bit more and also make my mathematics faster. Okay, so obviously here, we want to do the number 56. We've got our 1s column, our 2s column, 4s column, 8 column, 16 column, 32, 64, and 128, because they're all the powers. So 2 to the power of 2 would be 4, 2 to the power of 3 would be 8. 2 to the power of 4 would be 16, 2 to the power of 5, 32, 2 to the power of 64, 2 to the power of 7, 128. The reason I've only got up to 128 is because that is at one byte, and we'll get into that a different, into a different uh, tutorial. But for now, we're just going to be using something called an 8-bit system, or one byte, and we're just going to represent numbers in that, okay? The only issue with using a one-byte system is that the maximum value we can store in this is the number 255. I'll get around to why that is later. Okay, but let's first figure out how this works. Okay, so we've got number 56. Okay. So, what we have is 2 to the power of 7 is 128. Can that go into 56? Don't think it can, so we have a 0. Can 64 go into 56? No, it can't, so we have 0. 32 can, though. So we sorry, type in the number 32. Not 32, sorry. We have the number 1 which means that we have 1 times 32. Okay. So what we need to do is do 56 minus 32. So will leave us with minus 32. 24. Okay. So that's really, really good. Okay, so that means we have 1 in here because we've already used up a 32. Now, can 16 go into 24? Yes, it can. So what we do is we do uh, we have 1 in here, and then we have 24 minus 16, leaves us with 8. So we have 24 minus 16, and that equals 8. Okay, now, can 8 go into 8? Of course it can, so we have 1. And now we're left with 0, so, eight minus, so let's do 8 minus 8 equals 0. But we don't need any more, so 4 can't go into 0, 2 can't go into 0, and 1 can't go into 0. So the number 56 represented in base 2 or binary would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, let's do two more examples. Let's say I had the number... So I'm going to reset all of this. Let's say I have the number 48. Okay, so we do the same thing. So 128 can't go into 48, nope. 32, no. 64 can't. 32 can. So we put 1. Okay, 48 minus 32. 16. So 48 minus 62. Wait, 62, 32 equals 16. Okay, can 16 go into Yeah, it can. We have 1. 
then we have 16 minus 16 that equals 0. So, with lemma for 0, can 8 go into it? No. 4, no. 2, no. 1, no. Okay. So, that represented in an 8 bit binary. Um, the number 48 would represent it as 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Technically, we could just read it as 6 bits, which would be 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. You always start reading your numbers from the most significant bit because that's how we're used to. Okay, it also makes it a lot easier when you're doing addition rather than have to go from right to left. Well, so I found anyway, it works. If you don't have a calculator, always go from right to left to right, sorry. So that works a lot better. Okay, but now I'm going to show you a little shortcut. Okay, let's say you're really good at maths and you know all your powers. Okay, so you know what the power of um, 2 to the power of 8 is, 2 to the power of 9, so you'd all know that. But an easy way to think about it is if you look at this, the pattern here, so that each power, because it's because it's because it's a base 2 system, all we're doing is doubling the number. 8, double 8, 16, double 16, 32, double 32, 64, double 64 is 128, double 128 is 256. So if you ever have one less than the next most significant bit, so say we wanted to get the number 255, which is one less than 2 to the power of 8, literally our answer would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. We just look at this, so we can go 2 times, sorry, 1 times 128, it's 128, plus 1 times 64, 4. Plus 32, plus 16, plus 8, plus 4, plus 2, plus 1. And see, so it gives us 255. Really, really simple. And just to prove that's 1 less than 2 to the power of 8, we can just do 2 times 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 256 minus the 1, 255. So really, really simple when you get down to its fundamentals. Okay, so that works for the rest of them. Say if we wanted to get the number, I don't know, 15 in binary, it would be 0, 0, 0. Okay, so it's 1 less than 16, so 1 less than 2 to the power of 4, because we want the number 15, it would be 1, 1, 1, 1. So 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, so 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, 1 is 15. Really, really simple. However, okay, you can completely zone out for this bit if you want, but if the, the more people who are after more knowledge out there, I'm going to show you how to literally count up in ones, okay? If you want to learn, so like, you know how to count from 1 to 10, easy, on your fingers. You go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then when you get to 9, you move up one column and add 1, and it starts back at 0, doesn't it? The same rules apply with binary. So if we want the number 1... Yeah, start there, okay? But now we want the number 2. Okay? But we can't have the number 2 in there because binary doesn't contain a 2. We're only allowed two, two types of units, and that's 1s and 2s. 1s and zeros. So what we do is we shift up 1. Okay, so we shifted the 1 up. Say now we want the number 3. Okay, so we want the number 3. Okay? 1 up more is 4, so we can't have that. So what we do is we introduce a new one there. But now we want the number 4, okay? So what they do, the 1 shifts up, and it goes, oh, we've already reached our value. 0, 0. But now we want the number 5. So we've already got 4 there, so the 1's there. We can't shift up to 8 because that's too much. We introduce a new 1. Once you introduce up to 6, the 1 shifts up one column. It goes there. Now we want the number 7. A new 1's introduced. Now we really, really want the number eight, but we can't introduce a new one because there's no, there's no more least significant bit. The least significant bit, which is one, or the two to the power of zero, is already taken up. So we start again. Go zero, zero, and the most significant bit, which happens to be two to the power of two, shifts up one to eight, and then the process, the cycle repeats. So we have one. It's introduced. That one goes back to zero. If we want the number ten, it goes up to there. Want the number 11, that 1 again shifts. Go to the number 12, sorry. 
Wait, doesn't go like that. Because it's there. That's too much. We introduce a new one. Then that zero shifts up one if we want the number, the number 12. That one gets there. And it goes back to zero. So on and so forth. Okay. So, some of you, the brighter, among, the brighter amongst you, might be thinking, well, okay, this might be good and all of that, but why do we need it? Okay, what is it used in? Okay. Binary is used in stuff like basic electronics during logic gates, or primarily a lot in computers when we're trying to represent a piece of data. Because it is an easy number system to store for your computer, and it's easy for it to calculate. So, in computers, it's literally used in everything. It's used to represent text on the screen using something like Unicode or ACII, um, which we'll get into in a different episode. That's a type of thing that's used to represent symbols and characters. But that's for like other like bitmaps. Okay, an example, another example of a bitmap would be something like an image, and or even just representing numbers. Okay. So, as you can see, it's really really important that we know how binary works if we want to get in down to the fundamentals of computers, and if we especially want to know the inner workings of a processor and how to design computer programs and other stuff. Okay. But you've also got to understand that I may have taught you this, but we didn't know how to represent a negative number. So next time we'll be looking at how to represent negative numbers, such as using uh, the methods such as two's complement and sign and magnitude. Okay, but that's for another time. So I've been Grozy. I hope the tutorial, you found the tutorial useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.